Welcome everybody uh, to this conference. Uh, my name is Alvaro Sanchez and um, I'm going to talk to you about uh, Grails, AngularJS and Spring Security in uh, half an hour, which is uh, quite a challenge. Uh, but I can use uh, Martin's time, which is the, the talk afterwards, so I'm, I'm kidding. So uh, as I told you, my name is uh, Alvaro Sanchez. I work for a company called OCI. Um, OCI, for the ones who doesn't know, uh, is the new home of Grails. Um, so how many of you use Grails at work? OK. Um, that's nice. So I'm part of the, um, uh, of the uh, development team of Grails at uh, OCI. Uh, so if you have any questions uh, about that, uh, you can ask me, OK? I'll be here all day. Um, before we start into um, uh, Angular JS and uh, things like that, I will share some updates with you. Uh, so the current status is we have 3.1 as the latest version. Uh, 3.2 is the upcoming version, the development version. Uh, and well, there's also uh, maintenance versions for 3.0 and 2.5. Uh, but we encourage everybody to upgrade to the uh, shiniest and latest uh, Rails version, always. Uh, so just a recap of what we wrote uh, in Rails 3. Um, if you have used Rails 2, you, uh, you probably know that the, it was based on uh, Spring, uh, like raw Spring and Spring MVC. Uh, we changed that for, for Rails 3. It's uh, based on uh, Spring Boot. Uh, it brings uh, Gradle as build tool instead of a custom-based uh, Gantt build system. Uh, and it introduces profiles, which I'll explain a little bit later. Uh, apart from that, everything is the same but as in Glass 2, so the same commissions, uh, the plan uh, ecosystem, everything works uh, like before. Um, in Triple One, 1, uh, we upgraded to the latest Spring Boot and Spring Core versions. Uh, we introduced the uh, main improvement to the profile system, so uh, now the profile, profiles in Rails are essentially uh, like uh, template applications you can create, right? Uh, so there is a template for a web application, there is a template for a REST API, uh, another one for an AngularJS application, uh, or basically a Grails application with an AngularJS frontend, uh, and there are map more profiles uh, coming to the, um, to the repo. Uh, and this is actually open for anybody in the community to, to create any profile uh, you want. Uh, they are essentially a jar file, and it's uh, really easy to, pack, uh, to package them, to publish them. Uh, another feature uh, is the JSON views and GORM 5. So uh, GORM is the Grails ORM, um, and the latest version supports the, well, essentially all the versions of Hibernate, uh, the new version of MongoDB, and uh, for instance, the, uh, the implementation for MongoDB it's said to be uh, faster than uh, the Gmongo driver because of the implementation. I don't know uh, all the details about that, but it um, has some very impressive uh, benchmarks. Uh, it does support also No4j and Cassandra as uh, backends. What's coming in Grails 3.2? Well, uh, improvements in the GORM ecosystem. Uh, everything uh, around the async uh, world and non-blocking, because uh, you know it's what everybody is talking about now. Uh, so we want to introduce a, a GORM REST client. So the idea is that the uh, uh, when you save an, uh, an object, it would make it will make like a, a push request to to backend to uh, to save the object. Uh, there will be a non-blocking API on top of GORM as well. Uh, think that GORM is uh, an extra layer on top of uh, any implementation, so it uh, doesn't matter if you use uh, Hibernate or Cassandra or whatever. Uh, and then support in the MongoDB async driver support, also the Postgres SQL async driver. Um, and for instance, for AngularJS, we want to do uh, uh, um, scaffolding, so you can, uh, for instance, give in a domain class you will be able to scaffold like the uh, create page, list page, and things like that. So the same scaffolding mechanism that uh, currently exists for, um, for the server side views. 
Um, so Grails 3.2 will should be out um, before the summer, and before the end of this year, uh, we're aiming to bring 3.3 uh, um, with an, a netty based profile. I'm calling it a, a netty based, but maybe it's not because um, uh, since now at the end of the year, many things uh, that are happening, for instance, uh, Spring 5. Um, so you know Spring 5 is going to be also non-blocking and ASIC and, and everything like that. Uh, so we might uh, use it for that. But the, the idea is to, um, you know, to bring an non-blocking uh, alternative to this LTPI. API. Um, and on top of that, support big system things that Grail has like uh, uh, controllers and REST API, GORM and everything. Some comments about the um, um, community events and things like that. So there's a couple of conferences uh, this year. Um, so there is Grich in Madrid in, in next month, richcoff.com. Uh, there is Gridconf EU, uh, which is the, uh, let's say, the, the mother of this company, this conference, sorry, uh, in uh, Copenhagen in June. And the Youth Free Summit uh, in, in the USA uh, in November. Uh, the Youth Free Summit, for the ones who don't know, uh, is a spin off conference from uh, Spring One. Spring One used to be Spring One to GX, and the to GX part has been a spin off to uh, Youth Free Summit. And uh, well, finally, we have a Slack uh, community with uh, thousands of people, so you can sign up on Slack dash sign up dot .org dot org if you want. Okay, so um, let's talk about the uh, the actual uh, topic. So, uh, creating REST APIs with Rails. Uh, so there is a REST profile. Uh, the idea of a profile is, as I told you, is a template for creating applications. Uh, as the name suggests, the REST profi profile is for uh, REST APIs. Um, the idea is that when you, when you, the idea of profiles, profiles uh, bring you essentially uh, a skeleton, right? It brings you a set of uh, plugins installed by default. I'm talking about a, a specific Gradle build that is uh, brought to you uh, by default. And also a set of commands, uh, command line commands uh, that you can uh, run to generate things or, or things like that. Um, the idea of the REST profile is that you, you have like um, no UI things at all. So there's no GSP support, there's no uh, asset pipeline for uh, static assets, uh, no UI plugins, nothing. So it's essentially controllers, GORM, and everything but the UI. Uh, and for generating uh, the, the responses, uh, well, all the mechanisms that were in previous versions are still working. So you can, from a controller, you can uh, use the render method to, to render JSON or something like that. You can use a JSON uh, if you want. Uh, but the, let's say, the uh, proposed mechanism for rendering JSON is the JSON views, which I'll explain a bit later. Uh, so this profile brings uh, some profile-specific commands. Like, for instance, uh, create domain resource, which uh, create a domain class annotated with that resource. Uh, I'll explain that later. Or RESTful controller. So the JSON views, uh, they are Groovy files with a JSON extension, uh, statically compiled um, with a nice auto uh, completion from IDEA, where you can uh, generate um, a JSON response very easily uh, from your controllers, right? So for instance, uh, so the three lines of that JSON view will yield the JSON output uh, you have um, at the bottom. Uh, so if you're used to uh, work with the uh, traditional uh, Grails views, uh, like for instance in a controller when you use the render method, uh, you pass them up to the to the uh, GSP, and you can use that uh, from the GSP. It works the same with um, uh, with the JSON views. Uh, so in this case, for instance, person, it's part of the model 
or, or if you like the, the model and view from uh, uh, Spring DC, right? Uh, and it's uh, compiled statically, so if you put uh, something which is not, you make a typo, for instance, it, it won't compile. Uh, so the, uh, the performance is, is really good. But it's kind of DSL to, to generate in the JSON output. So to get started, you essentially um, use the create app command, uh, you specify the profile REST API. Um, the profiles brings you optional features. Um, there is also auto completion when you create this command, uh, when you type it, so uh, you can see what features are available and the features are depending on the, on the profile. Uh, so for instance, if you, if you uh, choose the Hibernate feature, uh, you'll have obviously all the Hibernate plugins installed uh, and things like that. Um, but there is a MongoDB feature, uh, there is a JSON BIOS feature, there is a security feature, right? So depending on the feature you bring, you will have more things in your build.gradle or not. So uh, to get started, uh, the, like the, the simplest REST API possible is a, a REST domain class. So what we have here is a, a regular domain class. The only difference is the asterisk source annotation. Uh, so with this, this, this is like a single file which, which will generate a CRUD uh, REST API for you with you know, post, get, post, put, delete things like that. Uh, so the, what the address resource annotation is doing, the address resource annotation is an AST transformation. Uh, and it's uh, on compile time is generating a controller with uh, the default behavior you would expect. And also uh, is generating a, a URL mapping on slash to do's. So for instance, a get slash to do's is a list of the elements on the database. Uh, post is a, you know, create and things like that, right? You can uh, specify which formats, so it could be only JSON or JSON and XML, uh, and that's all the formats supported. And uh, that would be like, you know, the most simplistic approach for generating a REST API. Uh, obviously, with this approach, everything is by default. So for instance, um, there's no additional methods you can create on this API. There's no, uh, you cannot change the well, you can change, for instance, the, the JSON uh, representation of, of the to-do class just, just by creating the, uh, the view. Because as I told you, uh, the controller is generated uh, at compile time, right? So uh, it's like if you, uh, when you use the add resource annotation, it's like if, if you were uh, creating a class like this. So that's the second step. When the uh, add resource annotation at the domain class is not enough because you want something else, for instance, in this case, I'm fine with the uh, create, delete uh, methods, the typical crude, but I want something else. I want a, a custom action, uh, like for instance, uh, pending to-dos. So I want all to-dos which are not completed. It, but I, I'm fine with the, the other ones, like for instance, the list is already fine, which is working. Uh, so this is what REST, uh, RESTful controller class is doing. Uh, it's a class that you can extend um, and if you extend it, you will have a, you'll inherit methods like index, like create, like save, update, edit, right? Um, and those are mapped by default in the URL map is to, uh, to the uh, HTTP methods, the usual ones. Um, so for instance, if you have a look at the pending method implementation, we're using respond, uh, which was introduced uh, months ago or even more. Uh, the respond method is taking into account the, uh, the content type required by the client. So if the client, for instance, uh, is requesting uh, in the accept header uh, a JSON, uh, then uh, if there is a JSON view available, uh, the JSON view will be rendered. But if there is also HTML uh, and the client wants HTML, then he will receive uh, HTML, right? Uh, and uh, the argument, the, the first argument for the respond method is uh, the model. So in this case, this is a GORM call that will, uh, will return a list of uh, uh, to-dos. Uh, it's snowing, by the way, if you want to know. 
Um, and we're specifying here the view to render uh, that element. So if you see the index method, or well, yeah, the, the index method is if the list of to-dos. Uh, and there is already a, an index um, view that renders a list of to-dos. So I'm just reusing the view with uh, this method, right? Then I can map this additional um, method in the, in the URL mappings, uh, and that's all. So for instance, uh, uh, with slash to do and specifying resources map uh, to do, that means that, so resources means that uh, you have to map the typical HTTP method um, to, to the action names. So get goes to index, post goes to create, and so on and so forth, right? And this is a little bit more uh, complex uh, JSON view. So there is a model block uh, where you declare your, your model. And uh, the model is the thing you pass from, uh, from the controller, right? Uh, it's a, a statically compiled. There is a auto-completion in idea. And there, is, there are some extensions for you to, to do it. For instance, uh, there is a response object where you can change, for instance, the, uh, the status. You can say, I don't know. Uh, 201, uh, or you can change, uh, I don't know, the, the content type of the response. So uh, basically all the things, or you can put a header. Everything you can do in a response object, uh, you can do it. Um, there's also a HAL um, object that you can use to generate a, um, you know, a typical HAL uh, response. You know what HAL is? Uh, it's a hypermedia for a REST API. So you essentially put uh, like uh, links to the self object and then it's uh, like a href for the URL of the, that object. And if there is uh, any relationship with other objects, you put links to those other objects as well. And that's done uh, automatically with that hal.links and passing the to-do. So the output of this one is like, a, so you have the hal links at the beginning and then you have a um, ID colon and then the ID. You have a description colon the, then the string, things like that. Does that make sense so far? Yes? OK. Remember, if you have questions, you have to, to write them down and uh, ask me af afterwards. Or, or I can use uh, Martin's time to for questions. OK. So 15 minutes left. So the AngularJS profile. The AngularJS uh, profile uh, extends the, the REST profile. Yes, I know. Thank you. Um, so the idea is that um, you get uh, a REST application where the uh, well, is a REST backend with an AngularJS frontend um, server-based. What do I mean by server-based? What I mean is that the, the Angular JS views are generated server-side, OK? Uh, it's a different, it's a, it's a grail-centric approach, if you like. Um, and you have everything set up by default. So you have, uh, you essentially get a build.gradle that includes the Node.js uh, Gradle plugin. You get the asset pipeline uh, Gradle plugin. Uh, you get the Bower Gradle plugin. Um, everything is put together nicely, so uh, you don't have to do anything else. Uh, there is some code generation for Angular, yes, some commands, and uh, we will introduce uh, scaffolding soon. So uh, the code generation commands allows you to, to uh, quickly create uh, create the, like a controllers, a service, services, domains, etc. You can get started by creating um, an application, and instead of uh, saying REST API, you, you specify the Angular profi profile. Um, everything else is mostly the same. Uh, you can use the same like a domain class, attribute resource notation, uh, the RESTful controller, the JSON views. Everything is like server side is the same, and then you have like um, Grails app slash assets slash JavaScript folder where you put all the Angular JS stuff. 
Um, and the final part is uh, to secure the, the API. Well, final part of the talk. After that, I will show you a, a sample application. So um, there is a, a plugin uh, called Spring Security REST, a Grails plugin, uh, which is a compatibility layer of Spring Security Core. So if you use the Grails uh, in your project, uh, you'll probably know Spring Security Core, which is the, like the default plugin for introducing Spring Security. The, the thing about um, Spring Security Core is that, um, and this also applies to the, to the underlying Spring Security library, uh, it's designed for doing uh, form-based authentication, like uh, server-based, right? So when you have like an API, it doesn't play really well, right? And that's essentially what the Spring Security REST is, is doing. So it's introducing uh, some things on top of uh, the core Spring Security. So there is like a JSON outputs, something that uh, 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 default uh, Spring Security doesn't have. Um, and uh, well, this is a token validation filter. It supports JWT tokens by default. Uh, there are different uh, backends. So uh, JWT is a stateless implementation, so no server storage is required. But if you do want to store the token somewhere, uh, you can use Memcached or Redis or uh, Gorg or even a, a memory cache, flash cache. There is partial auth to support, and uh, in the future, hopefully, there will be uh, full auth to support. But that's the idea to. Uh, so this is essentially the default approach you should take um, to secure an API-based application with Grails, right? And with API-based, I mean either a, just a plain REST API or a REST API with um, an AngularJS frontend on top of it. So to add security, uh, there is a feature on the Angular and REST API profiles, which is called security. And that's bring, this brings you the uh, Spring Security REST plugin and a couple of default configurations, an application.groovy file, uh, that you can further uh, extend it uh, with uh, your needs. Okay, before we get to this point, I'll show you uh, sample application. So uh, this is published on GitHub, or actually it's not yet, but uh, I will publish right after this, um, this conference, this talk. Um, so this is the, the, the default uh, look of an AngularJS uh, profile-based uh, Google's application. I'll show you some code. Do you see, okay, from the bottom? Yes? No? Okay. Um, so this is the, the like the minimum configuration you need for Spring Security. This is a Spring Security core stuff. So you, you specify uh, the user class, the user role, and the role class. Um, mappings for uh, static resources. And then, well, the the only trick is this pattern here. So uh, there is a slash API slash whatever, which goes through a stateless filter chain. Uh, I won't go into too much details about this because uh, this is a Spring Security REST uh, um, information, but if you want to ask me after the, in the, in the break, uh, you can do it. Uh, what else? Well, we have the to-do class. There's nothing fancy about that. I think there is a controller, right? So this is what I show you in the, in the slides. Uh, 
there is also uh, the JSON view. In this case, for instance, I'm generating the HAL links by myself, uh, just for the sake of uh, showing how can we, for instance, uh, generate uh, URLs, things like that. So the G object is a kind of uh, similar to the G object available in controllers and, and tag libs. Um, and we can take a look at the AngularJS stuff. So assets, JavaScript. <coughs> this is the entry point of the application. Uh, and this file is linked from the index of .gsp, right? Uh, so what you see here is uh, asset pipeline uh, directives to, uh, you know that this will include, um, um, for instance, these files for, from uh, Bower, which are installed uh, previously, uh, and for instance, the, these subfolders, and will include it, everything in, the single, in a single bundle uh, automatically for you. This is all working because of this Gradle uh, file, and then, well, there are some, uh, for instance, Bower uh, dependencies here for you to work, right? That's working automatically. Uh, and this is the, the controller, right? This is AngularJS stuff. So there's nothing uh, special for that. Actually, it's quite crappy AngularJS code because I'm not an, an AngularJS master, uh, but it does work, which is uh, the point for this. Um, there is also a, something like a domain class in AngularJS, right? So this is using the dollar resource object of AngularJS, if you know it, um, with all the particularities of, um, for instance, the, the update should be a put method because uh, I think uh, in AngularJS by default is, uh, is patched, if I remember correctly. Uh, the get method receives an array of objects, things like that. So with this uh, little code, you can do things like, for instance, um, to do that list. This is JavaScript code, and this will make a get request to the endpoint specified uh, before. Uh, and we have a couple of templates here, HTML templates. Okay, so. If I try to log in, I don't know if you see it here, it's a 401 response, okay? Um, because obviously the uh, credentials are wrong. <coughs> and now uh, this post request has been successful, so I'll Curva. <laughs> so this is the, the post request. Uh, it's a, a JSON request. Very simple. Uh, and the response is what you have here. This is coming from Spring Security REST. So essentially what you have here is a JWT. Well, that long string. A JWT uh, is a secure uh, format for storing any kind of information. And in particular, uh, in security, uh, JWT is used to, to securely store a uh, principal, right? If you think about a, a, a spring security principal object, which is server side, is uh, stored literally inside the JWT, and it's secure because you cannot modify it, right? Because otherwise, the signature will not match. Uh, so, you see here, get to slash API slash to do's. So, if I were going to request that uh, API, it's a uh, 401. Right? Why? Because there's no 
uh, token present in the request. However, this request does have a token in it. This is authorization and then better and the JWT token, right? And the, then the response is authenticated and you get a list of to-dos. Uh, the way that is working is, well, this is again Angular JS uh, code, but this is a, essentially with an interceptor. Uh, so an Angular JS interceptor works that uh, for every single request made with the dollar HTTP object, uh, this code is uh, secured. And what this guy is doing is essentially if I have a token in the session storage, then I uh, append it as an authorization header, like a better than the, uh, the token. So, um, Jekwe Barto. Uh, that's a QR code with a very short uh, survey for you to, to read the, this talk. And um, uh, so you can take a picture. And then it's only two questions and it uh, will help me to, uh, to know you, what you think about, about this. Uh, so once again, thank you very much for coming here. I will be here uh, all day. <laughs>